Hey guys, here it is. Where to start the month of September. Man, big thank you to Optima Batteries. Every month we've been giving a battery away. At the end of this video, I will announce the August winner. So you guys stick around to the end. And if you guys hadn't won yet, man, just leave a comment. I go through there randomly. You might be the winner in the September video. So also you got to go check out last week's video of the top three baits for uh, September. You know, those are three baits that I would have tied on definitely in some of these bodies of water that we're going to talk about today. Uh, cool video though, that we did last week. You guys need to check that out. So the lakes that I got this week, the lakes were breaking down. I've got Possum Kingdom Lake, Tyler Whitmire. He left a comment on my YouTube channel back on the last one and asked me to do it. So Tyler, we're gonna do Possum Kingdom. Never been there, don't know a thing about it. I just pulled it up, it looks really, really cool. Ryan Varner, Lake Shelbyville. I've been there one time, cool lake again. Let's break it down right here uh, today. And then last but not least, a lake that I am a little bit familiar with, Paul Broomer. Table Rock Lake. Let's go do Table Rock Lake. Talk about September fishing on Table Rock. So with that said, you guys be sure to stick around. One of you guys might be a winner. I've got that winner's name right there. If you could see that camera, right? If you could see that lens, that's the winner right there. But we're going to talk about it at the end of this video. And be sure you comment so you might be the winner on this one. Uh, all right, Possum Kingdom Lake. Man, what a cool lake. So let me uh, back out a little bit. Possum Kingdom Lake, for everybody that doesn't know, is a lake Oh, let's see. It's due west of the Dallas-Fort Worth Met Metroplex. It's dammed up on the Brazos River. What I remember about it from when I lived in Texas, they, I mean, they had, I think they caught a 16-pound bass out of it 20, 25, 30 years ago. If I go to real time here, the lakes, this is what the lake looks like full. Uh, looks like it had a big drought back in uh, 2013. Really cool lake. It's a lake a lot like Table Rock. It's a lake a lot like Lake of the Ozarks or just a long canyon deep river lake. It reminds me a little bit of Lake Travis. Uh, lots of lakes like this across the country. So you guys, this you can apply what I'm fixing to talk about on this lake. I've never fished this lake. This is a complete shot in the dark of how I am going to break it down. But it's where I would start. That's the name of the video. Where would I start if I was here? the month of September. So when I back out right here and I, there, there's a March photo, 2015, a couple things that I think about this time of the year. Shad are up in the top of the water column. Shad are very active in the backs of pockets. Bass are moving shallow. Um, so with that said, you know, I love to find little shallow underwater humps. Um, that I can throw my top water across. I can throw that, that, that lipless crankbait across. The, some baits that I mentioned in, in last month's video, or in last week's video, uh, you know, baits that, I, crankbait, square, you know, square bill crankbaits. I think about shallow flats, little humps, and this one right here in the back of this pocket just screams to me that, man, this thing right here has to have fish on it. It just, I think it's gonna be shallow on top of it. I don't know how low the lake is right here, but right there it's completely covered up. And, and I feel like if that thing has, you know, two to six feet of water, that's perfect for me. That's what I wanna find. You know, wind blowing, south wind blowing across this thing, this direction. Um, it's gonna be a spot that fish could ambush shad big time. So find spots like that, just any flat, you know, points or humps, that kind of stuff, you know, halfway back to the back of a pocket. I really like this section of the lake because it's where the, the river dumps in and the water mixes. It goes from muddy water to clear water. It's just a great spot to start in any lake that you guys go to. I like this saddle right here. Um, when that water's full, you've got some, you've got a, a pinch point right here that that water's gonna travel back and forth through these saddles. I think that's really cool. Um, Cool looking lake. All right, these docks right here, this month of September, think about shallow, flat docks, especially in the backs of pockets. These aren't, but these docks right here to me look like scream September fishing to me. Just really, really look good. These flat, shallow docks. Um, I'd really like those to be in the back of a pocket, you know, or the back of a creek. Uh, I'm sure if I looked around here a little bit more, I would find some, yeah. Like, look at these back here in the very back. I could catch one right there on that dock. I guarantee it. 
if it was isolated, it'd be even better. You know, so there's no water here, so let me make it make it look like what it, with water. Yeah, that's gonna be shallow. That's gonna be shallow. I want I want like the front of that dock being three four feet. That's how when I'm talking about shallow, you know, stained water. That's what I want. Um, you know, shallow docks in the backs of pockets. That's just a great place to look. Uh, that time of the year. If I was to move down the lake and pick one more spot on this body of water, let's just look at it. We talked about the shallow docks. Looks like a bunch more right there. Huh, pretty interesting right there. Got a marina, got a, a, a break wall, mouth of a pocket. You know, south wind's gonna be blowing. It's got a narrow entrance, I feel like. Uh, a lot of water can move back and forth across that. I kind of like that. I like that wave break right there. We did a really cool video, a few videos back on Project E fishing, you know, wave breaks uh, at the end of the summer. It's just a great way to catch them. Yeah, I kind of like that. That's kind of where I would start, guys. It, looking like running down this lake, everything gets really, really deep. Got a really cool creek coming in. Ooh, okay. Right here, definitely. One more thing you guys need to think about. This time of year, if you can find a creek that's running in, this creek right here has water in it. So that tells me this thing flows year round, without a doubt. There's water coming in. This is a big drought. Anytime I can find fresh water coming in this time of the year, go check it out. You know, these flat docks right here, that dock right there. So if I was to fill the lake up, I'm sure what the current lake level is. I just like this big flat back here. This whole area, there's gonna be some wood, but you can see the water color change. So I've got fresh water, oxygenated water coming in this body of water. That's the next spot that I would check on Possum Kingdom. All right, let's go to the next lake. And that lake is going to be Lake Shelbyville up in Illinois. We had a really cool event there one year. Uh, it was an all-star event back when I fished bass. Um, my buddy Arthur Defoe beat me that turkey, not by much either. They moved it to Lake Decatur the final day. I got stuck, I ran out of fuel. That's a whole nother story to talk about. I, I, I didn't put fuel in my boat because I was trying to get across a flat up on Lake Decatur. Whole long story, but Ott beat me. And just by barely, no, Aaron beat me. I'm thinking of the other all-star event. I finished second in two different ones. Aaron Martins beat me in that one. I beat me in the other one. Anyway, all right. Here we go, Lake Shelbyville. I did look at it for a few minutes prior to this video. And, you know, I, I just talked about, you know, shallow humps, shallow points, halfway back to the back of pockets. This one right here is a perfect example. This is a photo with the water down, obviously. When I fill it up, that's sitting right there. And I feel like that's a two to three foot top on it. That could be deadly, 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 deadly. It's just a place they will ambush shad this time of the year. It's just, man, I'd fish all the way around that. Now, you gotta have shad present for something like that. Looks to me like I've got fresh water running in this creek year round. Another great place to start, just on this flat. If I had any wood right out here on this flat, it's gonna be a place that you could throw uh, some of those baits that I talked about in, in last week's video, you know, that lipless crankbait. Uh, that kind of stuff, you know, I, I look for that kind of stuff in September. Just think, those fish are moving shallow. I, you know, I, I remember in that event, I caught a lot of fish, like I caught two or three each day in the back of this flat, you know. So if I filled this up, and I was just throwing that lipless crankbait, you know, and it was, it was right here just out across this flat, out in the middle you know, in the backs of smaller pockets. You know, it doesn't have to be a great big creek, you know, but look at the backs of those pockets and look for shad. You know, shad need to be present to make that stuff work. This is cool right here. When I get to the back of this creek right here, you got an old roadbed coming across. And that's just another area that, you know, is like a shallow hump, you know. I, I like those, those humps to have hard bottom on them, you know, pea gravel or, or hard clay. This In this case, it's gonna be a, you know, rock of some sort, that old road bed, but you know, those fish will congregate, you know, if that just comes up just a little bit, just needs to come up a foot, to me that, you know, and it's back in a pocket, back in a creek, that would be another spot that I would go check out. I really like how flat these bays are right here. Again, I, you know, those are the areas that I'm gonna look, flat bays, just out in the middle of the water, just, I'm not necessarily throwing at something specific in them, 
uh, it can just be really good. This little point right here, I think would have a lot of water going back across it, and especially if that makes a hump and it's two, three, four feet deep right there when I fill it up, could be perfect. Yeah, it's, it's completely under the water right there. And I don't want it to be deep. I want it to be, I want it to be like two to six, depending on water clarity. It looks like you got an old house foundation right out there too, if they're off a little bit deeper. So those two lakes right there, kind of, you know, off colored lakes, you know, I'm sure Possum Kingdom gets really clear, but uh, you know, kind of off colored lakes. Let's go to a lake that's, that's got all water clarity in it. You know, Table Rock with the suggestion that we got for that lake. Let's go there, that's Grand Oolagaw. So hard to find where you wanna go when I have all the stuff turned off. All right, Norfolk Bull Shoals, Table Rock. Let's zoom in. All right, let's try to pick a, a lower end spot, a mid lake spot, and an up the river spot here on Table Rock. Where to start on Table Rock? <laughs> There's so many good spots on this lake. I feel like on that lower end, this time of year, there's, there's some stuff going on, you, you know, with the smallmouth being involved, you know, they're very, very active. You know, I know right here by this ferry boat, you know, some of this stuff down through here, these points. Throwing a football jig, you know, down this stretch right here can be deadly, you know, maybe throwing a chopo is a big bait over there, you know, a jaywalker, you know, some sort of walking bait. That little stretch right there can be good. I've had success, you know, just finding little rock changes on this lower end that time of year. You no, know, anywhere it goes from pea gravel to a little bit bigger rock. Let's see if I can find one here. Timber, that's another thing to think about. You know, anywhere you got some of that pole timber, those fish will relate. You know, I've got some bigger chunk rock right there. That is the stuff that I look for. I, I know a spot right down over here on this lower end that, that can be really good. You know, this spot right here, it's got big rock in behind these docks. You know, and I just, I feel like, you know, when I find something like that, where I find that transition from pea gravel to big ledge rock, then back to pea gravel, and I got a couple isolated boat docks right there, man, that's the kind of stuff that I like to fish. Uh, one other thing that I would look at this time of year, you know, on that lake is, is any of those bigger docks out on pea gravel. Those docks, that can hold fish. You know, if, if, if those fish are out deeper that gets on up in the day, you know, see how this is a big flat point? You know, you can find a, a depth, and I would start like 12 to 20 underneath a dock like that, pitching a big one ounce jig or, or maybe throwing a slab spoon or your drop shot underneath docks like that. That is a pattern that'll work this time of year on Table Rock. So when you start moving up the lake, you know, the water color changes drastically you know that's when you start getting into into dirtier water and and like if i was to go up there right now run up the james river man go in this creek right here you know there's just going to be all kinds of cover shallow you know this is when you go to start fishing shallow any of these lay downs that you've got up in this creek you can see it's a flowing creek we've talked about that numerous times you've got water coming in fresh water you know, those shads start gravitating towards some of that because it's got the most oxygen content. And, uh, you know, any of these laydowns in here, they could be deadly. You know, an isolated boat dock could be deadly up here. That's the kind of stuff that I look for. Let's just find one more spot here. Maybe like a, you know, we talked about shallow humps. Right there. Looks like it's actually an old road coming across there. So, you know, that's gonna be shallow right there. It's deeper right here, deeper right here. That's gonna be shallow. And if you can find a spot like that, that's got one, two, three foot of water on top of it, you know, I don't know what the lake level is over there right now. It's probably normal level. But if you could find something like that, that's shallow, two to three foot of water, that will hold fish. Throw your top water across it, throw a lipless crankbait across it, burn a big square bill across it. That's the kind of stuff that I look for all across the country, just shallow humps, shallow flats that shad can get pushed up on that you can catch a lot of fish on. Might be a couple more right here. Absolutely, stuff like that right there. That kind of flat stuff right there is stuff that I look for when I'm fishing this time of year on a body of water like this. Guys, so there's some stuff to start. That's where I would start on these three bodies of water. You know, I'm sure there's better places 
But again, this video is called Where to Start. I'm trying to give you some ideas what to look for in the month of September. These fish are starting to move shallow. These fish are feeding on shad. These fish are feeding up. You know, think about that a lot in everything you're throwing. Stuff up in the water column, moving baits. Um, those are the things that, that, are, that go through my head. You know, boat docks is a big thing in September for me. Flats is a big thing. Midway to the backs of those pockets is a big thing for me. So keep those in mind when you go to the lake this September. All right, the battery winner from the August video. I've got random pick here, guys. Left a really nice comment, Sneed 72 lsneed72, send me an email through my website, your address. I will get a battery certificate to you, man. Congratulations on winning the Optima Blue Top battery. Thank you, Optima Batteries, for sponsoring this video and doing this great thing for all you viewers right here. So guys, hit that like button, hit that comment button. You could be the winner of the battery in the September video right here. I appreciate you guys following along. Appreciate all your support.